Okay, yeah. <laughs> we are live. <laughs> well, good evening, everyone in Canada and the U.S. Thank you for joining us and um, getting some inspiration this late at night. Well, we have an excellent surprise for all of you. Your, um, how many did we say? How many new launch products? Twelve new launch products. This is my daughter, Kayla, and I'm Colleen Walters, your CEO and founder. So what we're going to go through tonight is... Because all of these products, except for three, are not new um, to your inspiration at home, what we're going to do is have you go to the website and have a look at all of the ingredients. So we'll just kind of read you what's on the back of the, the jar so you get a feel for the product as we go through it. But we'll have you go ahead and, and um, read all of that, the nutritional information. So let's get started. Um, what are we starting with now? Uh, salted caramel. All right, salted caramel. You can go ahead and read the in in ingredients to everyone. Well, actually, just the chocolate. You know what? It's really easy. That one's just chocolate powder, uh, dark chocolate powder, and of course, salted caramel. Now, this is um, an or organic compliant salted caramel as well, um, which is fantastic um, for us. So, where would you use that one? So I have a list of stuff that we got from the um, Australian consultants, some suggestions. We got meringues with salted caramel, you can add it to a fruit smoothie, whipped cream and eat it right out of the bowl, <laughs> uh, caramel slice, caramel salted cookies, salted caramel mocha, uh, you can make a homemade magic ice with coconut oil and drizzle over your ice cream, uh, salted caramel melting moments, self-saucing pudding, biscuits or with Greek yogurt with a fruit for the kids. Yum. So lots of different ways you can use that one. Well, I know everyone's been asking me since we launched Salted Mabel, can you please do a salted <laughs> caramel? So twisted my arm long enough and you now have this. So those of you who are addicted to this in your coffees, you've got it now. Um, great. And remember, all of our dark chocolate or chocolate powders, not the white chocolate, are dairy free. So, um, really exciting to bring you all of that one in the US. And it is a taste of the USA. There you go. All right, let's move on to um, dip mixes. Who knew there were more dip mixes? But um, we're going to give you one of our first um, uh, release products here in Australia. So, we just released these last week in Australia and New Zealand, and you're going to get it too. Um, it's the Texas Jalapeno Ranch. Now, what's really funny with this one is um, I was down in Texas a couple of times working with some new consultants and leaders there. Hi, everyone. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. You know what that's about. <laughs> um, and they kept saying, can you please do a ranch dressing? And I thought, oh, it's kind of boring. Everyone does it. All right, let's do it with a twist. So... Um, in um, homage or homage to the um, Texas group, here we are, a Texas jalapeno ranch, seeing the jalapeno is your number one, um, I think you guys call it a fruit, um, there in um, Texas, we thought we'd give it a twist. Now this is Texas, or this is jalapeno, organic jalapeno, um, um, I want to say chips, but diced jalapeno. Um, and uh, also jalapeno powder. Now, um, this, this was such a fun product for us, um, trying to find product that we could actually import into um, Australia um, out of the U.S. So there's no such thing as jalapenos here, so we had to bring that in. And we had to be very, very, very specific on that. So you will know that um, there, this is non-ETO and non-irradiated jalapeno, which is there's only one supplier in the U.S. that has those in, in quantity. So it was very difficult for us to find, um, but we're really glad we did. We kept putting, um, putting feelers out there, finding it, look, you know, looking for places to find it, and we did. So um, go ahead and, and read all the ingredients that you all have right. back there. So we got green jalapeno, onion, mustard, parsley, chives, Lime peel, celery, dill, cilantro, paprika, salt, black pepper, and cayenne. Excellent. So, 
this one's hot. <laughs> Very hot. 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 Um, it will be up there with the um, Louisiana. Except, as you know, those of you who eat jalapeno, you know that it's got a really strong burn in the beginning, but it actually dives off quickly. Whereas the Louisiana style Creole just keeps building and building and gets <laughs> hotter and hotter. So that's what I love about jalapeno, a little bit different um, type of chili. Now, um, Oh, also, if you noticed, what was one of the ones that, um, lime peel, it's already got the lime in there instead of the lemon zest, um, we use lime here just to make it, um, uh, you know, again, more of the yaya twist on that. So go ahead and tell everyone what they can use that one for. So we got suggestions, uh, yogurt, at, with yogurt as a dipping sauce, you can obviously make ranch dressing with it, um, you can mix through mayo and make an aioli, um, Throw in a bag and coat some meat for uh, some burritos or tacos. Uh, sprinkle in homemade salsa on chicken and burrito bowls and uh, spicy guacamole. Great. And the very um, quick and easy way to make the um, ranch is, of course, using buttermilk. Um, some people are not wild with the flavor of buttermilk. You can take sour cream and thin that out as well with some milk. Um, so you really get that creamy um, salad, salad dressing style. It's also now, really good in hummus as well. Yes, delicious in hummus. And any cream pasta sauce or mm. on chicken, fantastic. All right, what one do we have next? Uh, the Cinco Pepper Enchilada. Great. And again, thanks to our Texas group, um, kept asking me, are you doing an enchilada mix? <laughs> Well, how about an enchilada dip mix? That way it's a lot more versatile than just a spice. So this cinco pepper means five pepper, of course, um, enchilada. And um, certainly if you've been on my Facebook um, page in the past three months or so, you would have seen I was posting pictures of enchiladas that I was making at home using this. And it is amazing, absolutely amazing. If you'd like to use tomato with your enchilada, you can. Uh, of course, it's not, you know, not really the authentic, authentic recipe, but most people use um, tomato paste or tomato sauce um, uh, with their enchiladas. Gorgeous. Uh, um, so you want to read the ingredients and then we'll go through what sure. they can do. Sure. We've got um, ancho chili, uh, onion, cilantro, cumin, uh, garlic, oregano, paprika, parsley, mild chili powder, salt, chipotle, black pepper, and uh, yeah, that's all. Excellent. Um, do you want to read some and uh, what things that they can do? Well, I just go check on something. Sure. Um, some people have been using them in uh, some Tex-Mex style wraps, uh, tacos, um, pork ribs uh, paired with the intense garlic oil, uh, a cheesy Tex-Mex dip with chorizo and wild lime oil uh, in Mexican lasagna or just on chicken. There's lots of different ways you can use that one. And of course we've had it in hummus oh, as well. Oh, and it was fantastic in hummus. Yeah, if you want a non-dairy dip. Um, using hummus, or this one would be really great with, um, oh, um, stuck for the word, those soybeans. Edamame. Edamame and avocado <gasps> blended together. Um, that is gorgeous or as well. Or avocado as well. I'm yeah. Making a nice avocado dip with that. Oh, yeah. You could do a really great really good. Stuff. Oh, yeah. So next we got pumpkin fiesta. Oh, I know you guys have been just waiting for this one. <laughs> You've seen how successful this product has been in Australia and New Zealand, um, turning out into our um, top 10 immediately upon release. So um, it is, I think, a about 51-52% pumpkin powder. So um, this is really fantastic in that, that it is um, full of that sweet pumpkin um, taste and it is a slightly Mexican flavor. There's, um, uh, you know, what I, what I did with this one, which was kind of fun, is I've really been asked for probably two years um, since I did the beetroot dip, or three years, um, to do a pumpkin dip. Australians love pumpkin squash. So um, really trying to think of what to do, what to do, and what I have came up with was taking our fajita and pumpkin powder and pumpkin pie spice and combining them all with um, a bunch of herbs and some garlic and onion and all of those things. And that's how Pumpkin Fiesta was born. So it is a great savory mix, great for, um, I'll let her read the <laughs> ingredients um, and then we'll go into what it's for. All right, so pumpkin powder, red bell peppers, minced onion, olives, 
garlic, paprika, salt, sugar, chipotle, lime zest, and herbs and spices. Great. Now, it's the olive that's a really um, wonderful little saltiness addition to this one. And, of course, um, pumpkin soup, any casseroles, um, uh, cream cheese for bagels. It's such a, a unique flavor for that. What else did the Australians come up with? All right. It's so hugely popular here. Uh, adding to, like, a bechamel sauce in your lasagna, mm -hmm. um, in ravioli, uh, on wedges, um, let's see, S through sautéed onions, um, in a cob loaf, spinach slice, a uh, baked potato, uh, boiled eggs, deviled eggs, um, scrap any kind of eggs, <laughs> uh, cheesy fiesta scones. Oh, it'd be great as a savior, mm -hmm. savory scone. Yeah, yeah uh, we got... Pumpkin Fiesta pizza with pumpkin feta and bacon. Mm. Now, Aussies, really like I said, are mad about pumpkin. So mm. they put um, pieces of pumpkin squash on their pizza. Mm. It is amazing. If you have never tried pumpkin on pizza, definitely want to give that a go. Really nice in um, um, risotto. Um, we got uh, pasta, roast, just sprinkled onto your roast pumpkin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, excellent. And really versatile. When we talk about being a cob loaf um, in the U.S., that means a sourdough bread loaf, um, hollowed out and uh, mixed in with the instead of the artichoke um, dip mix, um, one that we usually do. This one, absolutely gorgeous. Perfect. Lots of ideas there. All right, which one are we on to next? Uh, Emperor's Garden. Oh, right. You love this one, don't you? Oh, it's one of my favorites. It's yeah. amazing. I think it's a sleeper. I think people go, oh, there's so many other great um, ones that they just recognize right away and grab out those ones. But this one is highly versatile, um, really unique flavors. Really, really good. Um, Asian cooking is back on being really hot again. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where I've, I've decided to bring an Asian dip, um, other than the Thai, into the range. So this is a very, very typical Asian flavor. So I'll let Kayla go ahead and um, read the ingredients. So we got carrot, red bell pepper, minced onion, garlic granules, mustard powder, white sesame seeds, cayenne pepper, orange peel powder, herbs and spices. Excellent. So you're getting the ginger, the garlic, the... Um, you know, the vegetables, so the red bell peppers, the sweetness of that, the sweetness of the carrots, sesame seeds, which gives it that um, true Asian flavor as well. And then the orange peel powder, which just kind of melds everything together and lifts it quite lovely. So mm. um, a great blend. Um, and let's see what the Aussies have come up with on this blend for ways to use it. So it's really great uh, on marinated chicken paired with the wild lime olive oil. Um, any Asian-style vegetable soups, so udon soups, miso soups, mm. veggie soups, um, pork dumplings, or any kind of dumplings. We got the chicken lettuce wraps, um, sen choy bao, um, veggie stir fries, marinated prawns. Excellent. And I would use this on edamame as well. Mm. Or even in a, a stir fry yeah. or a fried rice. Yeah. Oh, beautiful in fried rice. Don't forget that one. Mm. Thank you. All right. All right. What's next? Uh, Italian Rustica. Oh, Italian Rustica. This was so much fun designing um, this blend. Um, trying to find some really unique ingredients, and these come from the U.S. They're freeze-dried vegetables um, out of the U.S., which is very exciting. So I was looking at that um, fantastic artichoke cob loaf that we always do, and I thought, well, what if I come up with a blend of that um, with some fantastic um, vegetables. So that's really what I've done. Um, so this is a one-stop thing. You just throw in this in your mayonnaise, um, sour cream if you're adding that, and of course Parmesan cheese, and you've got your um, hot artichoke bread loaf there. Now I've used this in pasta and quiche. Mm. Oh my gosh. So go ahead and read the ingredients there. <clears throat> Garlic granules, minced onion, red bell pepper, spinach, artichoke, Celery, leek, kale, lemon peel, and herbs and spices. Excellent. So, um, kale, spinach, um, artichoke, um, and of course the, the regular garlic and onion. And leek. And leek. Um, those are the main flavors that come through here. Of course, all of the herbs and spices in here to make it um, something special. So, pasta, um, like I said, quiche, um, lasagna, meatballs, <laughs> uh, steak rolls, grated Philly cheese on your bagels in the morning, um, 
in pasta sauce, bolognese sauce, on pizza, um, cob loaf as before, minestrone soup with chicken and chorizo, and damper rolls with chicken noodle soup, or even scones would be good with that too. Um, yeah, and you know what, I'm just thinking as you're, you're um, reading that, um, I thought of something and it's just actually gone out of my head already. Oh my gosh, it was really good. Oh, um, stuffing and chicken, that would be good too. Mm -hmm. Um, oh my gosh, I had something, something that, um, Americans would just, oh yeah, what about a really funky macaroni and cheese? Ooh. You know how you guys just love in, in the U.S. macaroni and cheese? I think this macaroni and cheese would be amazing. That would be really, really good. All right. So we're going to move on to our oils, I mean our vinegars there. All right. So start off with the coconut mango lime. You got it. You asked for it. You got it. Here you go. Um, the coveted coconut mango lime vinegar. Um, this one is really, really special. We're the only company in Australia that make um, coconut vinegar. It was a very long process to um, finalize this and, and work with our vinegar maker um, here in Queensland and um, to my specifications. So it is made from coconut nectar, coconut blossom nectar, I think it is a coconut nectar, and um, is fermented for between two and a half to three months. Um, then it's shipped to us where we blend it with another one of our vinegars to give it a little bit of sweetness because coconut vinegar is very, very tart. Um, we blend it with another one of our vinegars to just elevate that sweetness for you. And then the essence of mango and lime. Oh, mm. um, now I've seen people drink this right out of the bottle. I don't um, know. <laughs> but they, of course, then they make cocktails with it or just in plain club soda or soda water, and it makes a great adult kind of spritzer. Mm -hmm. um, you can add alcohol to that or not. That's totally up to you. But um, uh, I've, I've done the ingredients, so you go ahead with the um, idea. So our suggestions, we've got um, a sorbet cupcakes filled with strawberry jam and then a coconut mango oh. lime cheese uh, frosting. Uh, strawberry lime cream cheese. I mean... Yeah, and cheesecake, uh, yaya marinated prawns. Fantastic. Um, Everyone's using this in seafood mm. um, here. So prawns, jumbo shrimp, as you'd say, in the U.S. Um, so get some of those great Florida, Louisiana um, prawns and, and have that. We had uh, coconut, mango, and lime trifles uh, with vodka and soda water. So now we're going <laughs> into the sweets, yeah. Uh, on drumsticks with the Thai latte slice. Oh, yum. Absolutely, a great combination with any of those Asian style ones mm -hmm. from that area using lime and coconut and mango. Perfect. Uh, yeah, a top deck coconut, mango, and lime honey slice, mm. uh, lemon lime meringue pie, uh, lemon cupcakes with that in them, um, white chocolate cheesecake with a homemade lemon curd. Uh, coconut mango lime baked cheesecake. So those are just a few of our ideas that so we found. So you can see how versatile this one is. I'm sure it will be one of your favorites in your pantry. And of course, with your guests, they can choose savory or sweet or both at um, their next tasting. So mm -hmm. it will be a top one for you guys. So we got the pomegranate tamarind grapefruit. Oh, we've had this one for several years now. Um, again, it's a, a taste of Madagascar. Um, the, yes, and um, this is a combination of several of our vinegars, um, just our base vinegars, and then using the essence of pomegranate, uh, tamarind, and grapefruit. So it's got a little bit of a top note um, with the grapefruit and pomegranate, both being fairly tart, but then this almost a savory tamarind comes mm. through, which gives it, lends itself to sweet or savory dishes as well. So for ideas, uh, it's great for marinating strawberries. And so you can make shrubs with yeah. that as well, if yeah. you're um, drinking shrubs. Uh, jelly and cream gel ring of sor sorbet white chocolate cream and then a pomegranate and tamarind grapefruit on mm -hmm. top uh, with vodka and soda water. Again. That seems to be a theme. <laughs> oh, it's great. Um, w with Moscato or um, in champagne, mm -hmm. um, over white chocolate pancakes, uh, Asian style crispy chicken sauce. Oh, yum. Like mm. the plum sauce? Perfect. With tandoori and a glaze for chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, an apricot chicken drizzled over coleslaw. That would be awesome in coleslaw. It takes mm -hmm. that plain old boring coleslaw to a whole nother level. Um, on icing for cupcakes. Mm -hmm. 
uh, in pork loin Vietnamese spring rolls. Excellent. Uh, and drizzle over pavlovas uh, and uh, carrot and walnut cake with yaya, pomegranate, tamarind, and grapefruit balsamic. Great. So you can see this how it lends itself again to the Asian style cooking um, and also to the um, sweet um, dishes as well. So next we have the strawberry. Apricot, okay. blood Strawberry, orange. apricot, blood orange. Remember, you guys asked for all of those wonderful fruity vinegars, um, and here they are for you. Um, so, of course, with the blood orange there as a citrus note, just sings of that, but just got a little bit more sweetness to it mm -hmm. with the apricot and um, uh, strawberry. So, what what do you use this one for? Well, it's my favorite, just in Moscato. I can't have it without it now. <laughs> um, great in a fruit cobbler, marinated strawberries again, marinated pears in cupcakes, trifles, coconut butter biscuits with that, um, oh, apricot yum. and macadamia chocolate truffles um, over ice cream, yes. strawberry Can cream see that truffles, one on, there. <laughs> uh, on fresh strawberries, um, and making a shrub with strawberries as well. Beautiful for shrubs, yes. Uh, in a pink and white coconut slice. Uh, we got someone saying it's great on pork chops. That would be beautiful pork chops. Mm. You know, pork chops um, being a sweeter type of meat, and you normally put applesauce, things like yeah. that. This would be a great glaze on a pork chop. Um, it drizzled over a rocket pear and pecan parmesan salad. Mm -hmm. On Great on grilled fish. Uh, a glaze for turkey or ham mm -hmm. um, over a basic tomato, cucumber, and onion salad. Wow. And you can mix with a little olive oil and some whole grain mustard for a salad dressing. Oh, excellent. That, um, you know, whole grain mustard, it would be very similar to a honey mustard when mm. you do that. Yeah, it would be. Perfect. So we got the ROC next, raspberry the orange rock. caramelized. Uh, the rock. This is Yaya's The Rock. Um, raspberry orange caramelized. Um, this one is absolutely gorgeous. It is way up there in our top vinegars um, there. So it's got the um, raspberry with some uh, blood orange and, of course, being a caramelized um, vinegar. It's quite sweet and quite viscous, so very thick. So how would you use that one? Uh, uh, marinated roast chicken in melting moments on a pear and rocket salad. Um, drizzled over your camembert cheese and baked in the mm -hmm. oven. Yes. Uh, pavlova cups. Or an eaten mess. Oh, so yeah. either one, those people who, you know, pavlova eaten mess, very similar, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. Pavlova cups, biscuits, brownies, um, a on an upside down pineapple oh, cake. I never thought of that. That would be great. I'd throw some raspberries mm -hmm. in there too. Yeah. With uh, whiskey and lemonade. Ooh, yeah. ah, I like the thinking there. That'd be yeah. a nice summer drink. Those of you in the US and Canada, you still have an opportunity to <laughs> enjoy that on the deck. In a uh, rhubarb and white chocolate custard, um, on pancakes, uh, on a strawberry slice with cream, and uh, just with lemonade. Beautiful. And by, with lemonade, um, in the U.S., that could be fresh squeezed lemonade, but what they really mean here when we say lemonade is Sprite or 7-Up. So <laughs> I just want to give you the translation before you go. I had it eliminated, and it wasn't quite what I was expecting. <laughs> All right. So the final two. We got uh, Bri Briani. Briani. All right, so this one is a wonderful, it, there's many, many cultures that um, uh, make a rice um, dish very similar, so almost like a rice pilaf. Um, it's a very aromatic, um, and you would say, most people would, would say Indian or um, South African um, blend there, and um, again, it's just, uh, it, normally it, it is um, around a rice dish, but there's many other uses mm -hmm. for it, so if you want to read the ingredients. So, minced onion, cumin, garlic granules, turmeric, chili powder, saffron, and herbs and spices. Right, and that's secret herbs and spices, but um, um, just like the the uh, 11 secret herbs and spices that people know. But again, it's very, very aromatic. Um, it has the curry base to it, but um, more uh, uh, vegetables um, in there as well. Okay, go ahead. What would you so use it for? So we got uh, suggestions for in couscous, um, in a beef curry, uh, in slow-cooked beef, uh, chicken biryani coconut curry. Easy, yeah. With Easy lamb. Uh, curried sausages, uh, just in your rice, or great in a pumpkin soup, add mm -hmm. some warm flavors to that. Um, cauliflower rice, 
baked chicken and um, yeah, on prawns. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now, um, this one is really good um, in our typical way that we love to make curries and yayo. It's so quick and easy. Open some coconut milk or coconut cream. Throw some of this in it, um, a couple tablespoons. Um, again, go to, to taste and um, your meat or veggies and or veggies in there and anything that you want to um, uh, you know, like your carrots and um, you green vegetables, you put well. that in there in early. And at, at the end, last um, 15 minutes, you put in things like snap peas, things that you still want crispy too. Um, excellent, excellent um, for a homemade quick and easy curry. All right, I guess the shawarma is next. Um, again, highly aromatic. Um, it's a taste of turkey, a lot of Middle Eastern flavors in there. Um, and of course, you would know that with um, being so great with lamb um, or chicken, fantastic. Um, so I'll let you go ahead and read the, um, the few ingredients mm -hmm. in that one. So onion, garlic, paprika, pepper, cayenne pepper, lemon zest, and spices. Excellent. And the spices in this one are more of the aromatics um, in there. So a very, um, uh, like I said, Middle Eastern, great in falafels or um, uh, lamb tagine, um, chicken tagine, and of course, um, um, you know, if any of those, um, I don't know, well, shawarma for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, on a in a tortilla pie on lamb in a shepherd's pie, uh, curried sausages again. Uh, sausage rolls would be great with that. Lamb and vegetable casserole um, on top side with um, paired with the caspa oil. Okay, uh, so top side for those of you in the U.S. is um, like a corned beef. Mm. Um, in cottage pie, uh, again in pumpkin soup, meatballs. Oh yeah. On um. Like a skewers and meat. yeah, kebabs. kebabs, beautiful and kebabs, mm. absolutely gorgeous with a marinade. So there you have it. There's your 12 new products. We're really excited to bring you these, and um, I'll just go through your kits. So um, momentarily, your kits will be listed. Other than mystery kits, um, they will be listed with the proper uh, names of the product in there. So the large kit contains all of this. Um, and the price is, I believe it's $88.95 plus your shipping. The medium kit contains the pumpkin fiesta, the coconut mango lime vinegar, the rock raspberry orange caramelized vinegar, biryani, salted caramel chocolate powder, Texas jalapeno ranch, and the cinco pepper enchilada dip mix. And um, that one is $49.95. The small kit is pumpkin fiesta, coconut mango lime, raspberry orange caramelized, biryani spice, and salted caramel chocolate powder. And that one is $35.95 plus shipping. So there you have your brand new product line for September 1st. And the kits are available now to purchase in the back office. And you can start selling on September 1st. The kits will be um, sent out uh, be at least by September 1st. Um, so we're really excited about that. Don't forget there's an update in your catalog with 12 or sorry, um, eight pages plus these products. So it's exactly the same catalog, but we've added eight pages to the catalog so that you now have the fundraising material in there. You now have the um, cookbook, the AYA um, Four Ingredients Cookbook. You've got the information on freezer meals, which is so exciting. And also um, on the... Flavor Stack, the new Auto Ship Flavor of the Month Club. So that's so really exciting. exciting. And as you know, many of you um, had a sneak peek and preview of all of the um, new programs in the Australian Convention and perhaps on the New Zealand Convention um, live stream as well. So we just wanted to go over a few things with you now. Just be a couple more minutes. Um, 
so this week the directors here in australia have put together some fabulous webinars we've gone in detail with all of them on how these new programs um, are going to work so do tap into the freezer meal program i know that many of you have already experienced various freezer meal workshops across the u.s and canada for other companies we're really excited about some of the twists and turns that we've been able to develop with this freezer meal program and i think um, some of the things that we're missing in other programs, we've been able to hit the nail on the head there. So do take advantage of that training for you. We also have um, the Autoship program, the, the Flavor of the Month. It's called the Flavor Stacks. And they come in little, our, our product will come in little pods. And there'll be three pods per stack, and then four stacks in a box. And that is available for customers on an auto ship program, which means they have enough to do four meals of Yaya, plus some extra on the side, so they'll get some recipe tips and ideas for those. The pods, um, the stacks come with recipes, and at the bottom will be a tearaway um, uh, grocery list for them to go buy the groceries that, ma that match that um, recipe for there. So it's an opportunity for you to build another stream of income as a consultant with your inspiration at home with an auto ship program, much like many of the network marketing companies have. And we know the way that Yai is growing so big online that this is a great way to service those long distance customers, those customers who want to just taste and try a few things in Yaya without getting the, you know, the big full size jar. Um, for those people who are really busy and don't want to have to stop and think about what to make at the end of the day, um, they've got those uh, pods there. Now what's really great is we've taken the flavor stacks and we've developed a few for the freezer meals. So it's the perfect quantity for those people doing freezer meal workshops to be able to um, sell your um, flavor stacks to the guests attending the workshop. So they both go hand in hand. Um, and then there's a couple other things that actually go hand in hand to that. And one is that we've been so um, excited to that, that CBSL has purchased the rights for the Sensei Video Player. Now what the Sensei Video Player is, please go have a look at, um, I think it's on the, on the Australian, um, uh, release, uh, convention release, but what it is, is it's a video player that has um, a shopping cart or a sign up link or whatever it is that we put in there embedded right in it. So if we were doing a, a recipe, um, uh, a two minute, three minute video on recipes, um, instead of a new product launch, we could have at the bottom of the video player the products that we used in that recipe. And all your customer would do would be click on that, buy that product, and they would be able to buy it directly within the video and link um, player and not have to go to an outside website. That's where the big fall down is in um, sales online, is through YouTube and things like that, is people get lost when they go off site to another site. We've got it now going to be embedded within there. So they can join, they can buy a product, they can get more information right within um, that same site and not have to go off to our site and get lost within that. So we're really excited about that. I know that there's a couple of companies have used this in the US to build massive, massive businesses, um, you know, several hundred million dollars using this video player system. So we are really, really excited to have that launch over the next couple of months for you. And um, ongoing videos added monthly. That's, mm -hmm. that's really exciting. The next thing that we have um, to share with you is a total upgrade of our back office. I know I can Yay! hear the cheers from the U.S. and Canada from here. I swear I can. Um, now, we, we, we had uh, very fortunate to have some of the U.S. leaders and Canadian leaders into Dallas three weeks ago to finalize everything on a wish list that they wanted. Um, plus, uh, we've been working with our supply, software supplier on an, a total upgrade. So first of all, the upgrade is what we'll be launching on September 1st. We should have your um, fundraising in the back office by then as well. Um, and of course, the auto ship program in the back office as well. So that all is tied into this. Plus, so many things like... Um, 
oh, I don't know, tracing and tracking within the back office, autoresponders so that when somebody buys something from you online, you're actually going to get an email saying so-and-so bought this, and um, when somebody is... Um, and they'll get an email saying, thank you for your order. So all of these things are going to be there. Even some fantastic new pieces. I know some of you as leaders have been noticing some of the changes already in um, your downline reporting, which has been fantastic. But also some changes where you can edit orders until you put the credit cards in. And the very last step of the process is you will put every single person's order in, including the host's multiple different types of orders. And then you close close the show by adding the credit card for each person. That way it gives you full functionality of being able to edit until the very last minute. And I know I can hear the cheers mm -hmm. um, there, so there won't be those four different charges on the hostess's credit card. Um, it'll all be done as one charge. So. Um, little things like a widget in the back office that will, when you open up your screen to the back office, it will tell you where you are in your qualifications each month. You know, how close you are to getting your 3, 6, or 10% rebate, um, how close you are in qualifying bronze. If you're a bronze leader, you only need this, this, and this, and you're Greek qualified. Or if you're new, upcoming bronze, it'll say this, this, and this, and you will qualify. We're even working on getting all of our tracking for our incentive trips in the back office and inspired start. So the wish list that all of these leaders and all of the directors here in Australia presented, we were told that they can do all of it, every single piece. There's nothing that they can't do, which I'm really, really, really excited about. So it's going to be a process over the next couple of months, but the first step is this user-friendly, intuitive, easy-to-do um, new back office platform, and that comes at the beginning of September. So I think that's all we have to say other than I look forward to seeing you in road shows in September, in Dallas, in Ohio, in um, Toronto, Saskatoon, Calgary, Vancouver, and Kamloops. I can't wait to see all of you. So um, with that, thank you very much, Kayla, for helping us right. today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> helping us launch this, and um, we'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.